you. Hi there, it's Kevin Van Ord standing in for reviewer Leif Johnson to tell you about Outlast. In Outlast, the frights don't come from ghouls and ghosts. Instead, real-world fears provide plenty of their own horror. And while this spook fest becomes too predictable by the end, you should give yourself over to this game's terrors. Turn off the lights, put on your headphones, and prepare to face the dark side of your fellow humans. Outlast is the tale of Miles Upshur, an investigative journalist digging up dirt at the Mount Massive Asylum. Mere seconds in, he realizes he probably made a bad choice. The terror of this journey gains most of its strength from your lack of weapons. Your sole means of dealing with the horrors that assail you is to run and hide. The only device you carry is your camcorder, which doubles as a night vision device with batteries that need frequent replacing. You spend much of the game darting from sewers to theaters and laboratories in utter blackness. And at first, the fast draining batteries help maintain a pervading sense of dread. Eventually, however, batteries become so commonplace that some of the tension is diminished. Even so, Outlast will have you biting your nails. You spend a lot of time hiding in lockers and under beds, watching your would-be attackers through metal slats. In between breathless escapes, you collect documents pertaining to creepy Nazi doctors and solving simple environmental puzzles. A mental hospital may be a cliché setting for a horror story, but part of Outlast's tension comes from how dangerous psychopaths and harmless patients mingle. You never know which you're going to encounter. You may be able to walk right past a trio of scarred patients, but a loitering resident with a club might clobber you even if he let you pass before. We kill him slow. Such patience. I want his tongue. By the third of Outlast's roughly seven hours of play, the standard inmates cease to be surprising. There are, however, some freaky exceptions. In one of Outlast's high points, for instance, you hunt down a key while playing a frantic game of cat and mouse with a savage, silky-voiced doctor. It's a fantastic sequence, and every patient you encounter afterwards is a pussycat in comparison. That's even true of the lumbering monstrosity who shatters doors and hunts you throughout the plot, whose appearances can get tiresome. But even when you've grown used to the habits of the inmates, Outlast manages to sustain dread through its commendable sound design. The way you hear your heart beat with greater intensity upon the approach of a hostile party is not only effective, but substitutes for a visual interface. Outlast is also a visual treat. Step into a pool of water, for instance, and you trigger little waves on the water's surface. Track through a pool of blood, and you may be startled by the bloody footprints you glimpse before realizing they're your own. Outlast is at its best when it remains grounded in the real world, though it does dabble in the supernatural. When it comes, the sight of something other than humans comes almost as a relief. And that's because you ultimately build up a tolerance to the seemingly dead bodies that leap up and attack, or the sight of patients' faces popping up inches away when you emerge from a crawl space. That shouldn't prevent you from playing Outlast, though. For the most part, this chilling adventure effectively delivers a pervading sense of anxiety and panic, never losing sight of the survival component of survival horror. Ah! 